Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how two guys can pour a concrete floor. So this is a 32 by 28 garage. We've got a center drain. The floor all slopes to that center drain from all four directions. If you're new to watching my channel, um, my, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. I've been pouring concrete for 42 years now. My channel is all about concrete stuff, flat stuff mostly, garages, houses, patios, pool decks, stamp concrete, pretty much everything flat we, we pour and I make videos about. So I've got over 500 videos up here on YouTube. If you're looking to pour something, I've probably got a video about it. So just check out my channel, Mike Day Concrete or everything about concrete. Right now, me and Darren are going to pour this garage floor out and I'm going to show you, you know, the amount of work it takes for two guys to pour a concrete floor and that, you know, if that's all you got is two people and you're looking to pour a concrete floor, it's possible. Um, you just watch us do it here. It's going to be similar to how we do it. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what this costs, you know, what it costs to have a, a concrete floor done like this or to hire somebody like us to come in and do it for you. So make sure you stick around for the end of the video. Uh, we, we're usually a three-person crew for most of the season. There's me over there on the right. Darren's the one raking the concrete. And we have another guy, Luke. Luke happened to call in sick today, so which is rare for any of, any of us to really to call in sick. But he, uh, he just couldn't make it today. So we're not going to cancel the pour because one guy can't make it. We still need to get the concrete floor done. Now we're pouring basically a four inch floor this one was quite a bit thicker up here towards the front it probably averaged about six inches thick and we're pouring on the poly vapor barrier we've got fiber mesh reinforcement in the concrete so these little polypropylene fibers they mix right in the concrete truck as they batch out the concrete and we we're using a 3500 psi mix today we put a little bit of air entrainment in our mixes because we live in the northeast where we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles if you live in the south you don't have to really have to worry about air and you know basically we'll pour we use water reducer in the concrete mix also and what the water reducer does it's a, just a chemical additive they put into liquid chemical additive it allows us to pour a little bit looser slump without having to add water so the more water you add to the concrete, the wetter you pour the concrete, usually it, it hurts the strength of the concrete, but using the water reducer, uh, we don't have to worry about really hurting the strength of the concrete, pouring it as loose as we're pouring it. So we tell the, we tell the concrete driver to mix it up to about a six, six and a half inch slump. And generally that's the slump we pour right there. So that's a pretty good slump. It's a pretty good consistency for two guys or even three guys to pour four guys whatever you got makes pouring concrete pretty easy now we got two trucks showing up first one's gonna do we'll probably end up doing about two-thirds of this because the thickness of the floor in the back except for that one left hand corner where we started is about four inches and then the thickness in the front is about six inches so we what we generally like to do is just dump the first truck right out if you're new to this, I mean, if you've never done this before, you might not want to dump the whole truck out at one time like we do. Darren, you know, what Darren's doing is we have a blue chalk line snap around the around the perimeter of the inside of those concrete walls, and that's the level we're going by, although it's hard to see in the video. but So Darren's kind of leveling the concrete off as I'm dumping it out of the chute, even with the, that blue chalk line. And because we do this every day, we can usually get it pretty close, you know, not too high or not too low, just by eye, like he's doing, just raking it out by eye. That's the end of the truck right there. I'm scraping him down. So we'll we'll scrape his chute down, and he'll pull right out of the way. Generally, the second truck is right behind him, so he'll get out of the way and let that second truck start to back in. So after we get the concrete dumped out, now we're just going to mag float our what we call our wet pads right to that blue chalk line we use these these wet pads to go by when we start screeding as you'll see us here in a minute but this is basically the process I did I did speed up certain parts of the video so it looks if it looks like we're working a little extra fast it's just because I sped it up a little bit I think you'll get the general idea of the time it takes I think the whole video is about a little over 22 minutes long and in real time this took us about 
35 minutes, I think, me and Darren, to get this whole floor poured, just to give you an idea. We like, we like magging our edges first like this, getting them nice and clean and neat and smooth, something to go by when, when we screed. Now, we're going to wet screed. We don't need to set any type of rails or 2x4 to go by. Um, this is the way we were taught to screed. This is the way we screed when we're doing it by hand. And remember, there's a center drain there. We're gonna we're gonna mag around that center drain, and that's gonna give us something to go by in the middle. So we don't really need to set anything with a laser there because that drain was already set with a laser. And that slopes. I, again, I told you in the beginning that slopes about an inch and a half or so from the outside walls to the drain so the whole floor 32 by 28 is all going to slope to the center floor drain we'll do half the garages we do we probably have a center drain and the other half just kind of slope usually out the front of the garage doors so here we are striking off our wet pad and this is the way we strike things off so we got the drain to go by we got the outside edge to go by and now we got that what we call that wet pad in the middle to go by and without, without a puddler here, without somebody raking the concrete, you know, we generally like to have the concrete a little bit high on the back of the straight edge as we're pulling it back. If we have it low, then we have to continually stop to fill it in. So if it's a little bit high, that's good. If it's too high, then we got to stop and rake, rake a little bit of it down. We don't want to, if it gets too high, sometimes it'll just kind of flow back under the screed. As you can see right there, we stopped. We'll rake it down. Now, if we had a raker here, we wouldn't have to stop because the rake, the guy raking, would take care of this for us. But with only two of you, you know, there's going to be a little bit more stopping and starting than normal. This is what we call a bay right here. A bay is about the the size of that screed. That's a 14 foot screed, you know. But in down to the center of that drain, that's one bay. So. We, you know, when we talk in bays, there's basically four bays to this garage, that left that we're doing right now, then the right over there, and then the front piece on the left and, and the front piece on the right, so four different bays. So we'll get this first bay screeded. Darren's cleaning up around the center drain, and then we'll go over to the right and get that other bay screeded, and then we'll, we'll bull float that. All in all, that that one bay there probably took us two or three minutes to get to get down and get screeded to where we need it, and then we move on here. Now we don't want we have to have the right size screed here because we have a center drain. We don't want the screed to overhang the center of that drain too much because the floor is sloped. It would just the, the edge of the screed would dig in if it overhang too much, according to the center of the drain you can see we were a little bit low there so we gotta stop pull up some mud fill in where we need to fill in and then go a little bit further you know we ideally we'd like to go the whole way without stopping if we could but sometimes you just gotta stop and and rake the mud to wherever you need it you see we're kind of kicking in our footprints as we move back this keeps us from having to stop too much if if you're new to this, if you haven't done this very much, you're probably not going to be able to kick screed like we are. So you may just you may just reach out, pull the screed back, three or four strokes, stop, and then just set back, set your feet back, and do it again that way. So that's definitely going to take you a little bit longer. And remember, most concrete companies allow you so many minutes per yard to pour. They're usually like seven or eight minutes. So if that was eight yards. 8 yards times 7 minutes would be about 56 minutes you'd have to get that poured out before they might charge you, uh, you know, a little extra for having a the truck there too long. So just in comparison, you know, that probably, by the time we dumped that truck out and sent him on his way, that was probably maybe between 7 and 8 minutes to dump that whole truck out. That's... That's another reason we like to dump them right out is, number one, you know, obviously we know what we're doing because we do it every day, so there's a big difference there. Number two, we like to get the trucks right back to the batch plant guy so he can reuse them either for us if we have a second pour 
or for somebody else who's who's waiting to pour. We'll generally pour every single morning, have concrete on the books for either 6.30 or 7 a.m. every morning. We like to have the first pours, the first trucks out of the plan every morning. That generally means, you know, they're not going to be late because someone held them up on a previous pour. And it's just something we can count on doing every single morning. So we would we just we got those first two bays screeded, got them both loaded as you saw. And now we're working on this third bay right here. We'll get this filled in. Remember, it's quite a bit thicker here, so it takes a little bit more concrete to get the same space filled. Gonna just flip that chute. Sometimes you can just flip the chute. They stay on pretty good, even if you flip them. That's just a little bit quicker than having the guy jump in the truck, pull ahead. And then we'll get that filled up. We, when we set those garage door forms, we, we generally set them right to grade. So the top of that form is right to the height we need it at. So that gives us something to go by there. And then we got a blue line snapped on the inside of that little concrete wall in the middle of the two doors. We're going to get most of this most of this poured right out. We'll leave we'll leave it a little bit low in front of that garage door just in case the stuff we've already poured out is a little bit high. It allows us to pull that high into the low spot without having to shovel the concrete out. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just throwing in some, I got some fiberglass rebar and I'm just sticking it in on the edges of these garage doors. Sometimes if the concrete does want to crack, it'll crack right off that, that little corner there where Darren's mag floating. So what the rebar will do is, is if it does want to crack there, the rebar just helps hold that crack nice and tight. Doesn't allow it to spread apart. If it does crack there, it's generally because it's just a shrinkage crack, not really a structural thing. But the concrete does shrink as it cures, especially this first day, the first 24 hours, it shrinks the most. That's why, you know, Darren's going to stay here and power trial this nice and smooth. And then before he leaves today, right after he gets done power trialing, he saw cuts the floor. He'll probably just saw cut one down the middle each way. So he'll kind of what we call X the floor. And those saw cuts will control any type of shrinkage cracking that happens in the floor. And that's that's usually it. If we saw cut this the same day, it doesn't want to crack after that. We're just checking the garage door form, making sure there's no little hump or dip in that wood. That's why we, we call this striking the door. We'll strike the door. That looks really good right there. And then Darren's going to take the edge of the screed and run it right down the center of that that floor drain over there to his right and I'm gonna use this wet pad here to go by I left I'm gonna leave this bay right here in real time so you can see just about how long it takes us to pull down a bay like this you know that's about that's about 14 by 14 14 by 13 and we're using a 14 foot screed right here so what Darren's doing, the reason he stopped was the concrete was getting a little high out there on that outside edge. He wants to make sure that stays perfect because he's sloping that down to that drain. He doesn't want too much high to run out over the edge of the, the pad there where he's screening by. I was just a little bit low actually, so I'm going to pull into pull a little mud into where I was screening. When you kick screed the way we do, it's just there's nothing worse than being low and trying to kick in too much. You see, I'm kicking it up there. I'd rather have it a little bit high. Much easier to pull it back if it's high. Doesn't you can see? It doesn't really take long to screed a bay if you know you got two guys that know what they're doing on the screed, and you're not too too high or too low, and you don't have to stop. That's why having having one guy raking is really ideal on, on something like this. But two guys can definitely do something like this. Just having a little bit of a system down, you know, doing one bay at a time, knowing what you're doing is kind of key. Not just going at it kind of kind of blind. 
that's kind of why I put up a lot of these videos is, you know, just trying to help you guys figure out how to do things if you've never done it before. Plus, if I mean, if you really want some training, some, some more in-depth training where I go into a lot more detail, I've got the Concrete Underground. The link for that is in the description below. And that's my private training. Plus, you get access to me in there. You know, we can talk via the forums, via email, sometimes even via phone. We can talk. Um, that's inside the Concrete Underground, guys. So if you want to check that out, link is for that down, down below. So there's basically that bay. I mean, that took about a couple minutes, about two minutes to get that down with just two of us as far as screeding goes. And, you know, Darren's finishing over there. We'll get this fourth bay down. He's, he's mag floating some of the edge. While I was raking, we call that tuning it in. We'll tune the concrete in, get it as close as I by possible. But still trying to leave it a little bit high. You can see that little bit of high we're pulling back with the screed. And then if we feel like that gets too high, we'll just stop for a second and pull that high down and fill in where it's low behind us. You can pull back quite a bit. See how much we're pulling back right there before you got to stop. If you know how to screed. If you don't, then you might want to stop earlier and pull that back. And then, so we got half that bay done. And then, uh, you know, we told Matt, the concrete driver, you know, run a little bit of crete. We'll run a little bit more here, fill in some more. But again, we don't want to fill in too much. We don't want to have to sh have to shovel out a big pile and leave it on the outside. We we do try to be a little bit neat too as we do this. We don't want to make a mess. And then if he's got anything left on the truck, he'll just take it back to the concrete plant. And they'll either just dump it in a pit and they crush it. Or they'll, if they have a lot left on, they have these little blocks all set up. They'll pour what's left inside the block and, and make these concrete blocks that they sell for retaining walls or whatever. The key for us here is we're, as we're screeding this, you know, you, we got to remember we got a center drain and we want, we don't want any dips, we don't want any humps, we want a really nice even slope to that center drain so any water that does come in the garage or drips off a car, you know, doesn't leave a puddle. It all works its way right to the center drain so that's, that's pretty key when you're screeding no matter what kind of floor or patio or or a pool deck or whatever you're screeding it's it's key to have it nice and the surface what we call level with the, with the you know the remainder of what you've already screeded so there's a little trick to that that's a little bit of a learning curve to do you know and you can you can watch videos like this and get a pretty good idea of what we're doing but the really the best way to learn is to just go out there and grab a screed now you could use I guess some guys use a 2x4 we use these magnesium screeds they're really lightweight and uh, just you know feel it you got to feel the screed in your hand pulling the mud back and that's really the best way to learn I wanted to show you just what it looks like when there's no dips or humps see when I run that bull float over that there's no gaps under it both edges are touching which means there's no humps in between there even with a slope like this and you know everything fills in really nice now I can basically just run the bull float down and back and everything fills in meaning all the the aggregate gets slightly pushed down which which brings up a nice cream or a paste to the surface and fills in and that's kind of the look you want right there with no rock holes or anything in it when uh, when you're gonna power trial something that makes power trialing a lot easier typically will on a day like today you know it's 70 degrees this isn't gonna see much Sun because of the trees that are here and the way the the Sun's rising but so something that's half in the Sun half in the shade 70 degrees out um, it's probably probably around 730 740 right now it'll it'll take two or three hours for this to set up enough to put a power trial on because of that plastic under it the temperatures you know basically being in the shade um, so Darren's gonna hang out he'll just hang out here and wait for it to set up I'm gonna end up going and doing something else 
getting something else ready for the next week. But it doesn't really take two of us to finish a concrete floor like this. And that's basically it. I mean, that's kind of the, the sequence you would use if you were going to pour this. Now, the cost of something like this is, you know, if that's, if that's 15 yards of concrete we used and we pay $140 a yard, you know, that, that includes tax and everything. Um, you take your 15 times 140, that's about 2100 bucks right there just for the concrete. So, and then the labor for us to come in and pour and finish something like this is, uh, let's go, I go by the square foot. So 32 by 28 equals 896 square feet. And if we figure three bucks a square foot for labor to pour and finish times three, that's $2,688 for, for us to show up and pour finish which is power trial of concrete and saw the concrete so we're 2688 plus the 2100 for the concrete gets us the 4788 dollars right now and then you get the the poly that goes down i usually figure 10 cents a square foot for that so there's about another 90 bucks that gets us the 4878 and then if you know, in, here in the Northeast, we put two inches of styrofoam under the concrete. You don't generally need to do that if, if it's not in the Northeast or if the building codes don't require it. Our building codes require it. So, I mean, you could get a, a concrete floor poured right there for, you know, just about 5000 bucks. Uh, remember, we were a little thicker in front, so we took a little extra concrete than what you generally need. But about 5000 bucks to get this poured. And then if you add the styrofoam, I typically charge out the styrofoam at about three bucks a square foot so you know again 32 by 28 equals 896 square feet times three equals another 2688 bucks on top of that 5000 so that gets you to about 7688 for the whole floor here the way it was today with the styrofoam now that doesn't include any grading that's all done by the excavation contractor so that would be on top of that guys so again, thanks for watching Two Man Concrete Pour. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go down there and hit subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. We'll see you on the next one.